Hey there, people of the grid. It's Sunday, February the 6th, 5th, 7th. Sunday, February the 7th. You know what? It's been just over nine years since we purchased our 2011 Nissan Leaf. When we bought it, the buzz of the day was, what are you gonna do after five years when the battery dies? What are you gonna do after eight years when the battery dies? Well, reality for us, it's been over nine years. The battery's still going strong. It's freezing cold outside. Let's go take a look at the car, shall we? I took a quick look and we'll dive into the numbers in a bit, but uh, over nine years, and I had to double check it to make sure this was right, we have spent the tiny amount of $3,405 in maintenance. That's nothing. Wow. Let's go uh, take the snow off the car, take it for a quick winter spin. crispy in here front right tire because it's so cold out here Ethan hasn't driven well he drove it last night but he's got to get some air in that tire so we're going to put some air in the tire right now we're going to go to the store because we need to get some juice for our breakfast we're having Sunday brunch and we'll talk about the car now this car the Leaf has spent what nine winters nine Calgary Western Canadian winters outside for the most part I think uh, when we first got it because it was uh yeah, it was my primary driver for work. We would park it in the garage, but for the most part of uh, seven years plus, I think it's spent living outside. And uh, you can see, because the battery is cold. I had to hop out, help Ethan get the compressor plugged in. The 2011 Leaf, it didn't have thermal battery management. The battery is wrapped to protect it, and it does have heating coils throughout the battery but they don't trigger until it hits minus 23 outside. That's okay, it, it takes care of itself and when you drive it, the battery warms up. The other thing is that uh, since we've had this car, we've lost a couple of bars of battery range. Now check this out, see that? That's how you know. So these, were, these bars on the outside, so we only have 10 of the 12 battery bars that we started out with. Man, at this temperature, <laughs> Stuff starts getting cold real quick. Yeah, so we lost two battery bars over the nine years that we've owned the car. Not bad. I mean, it's still got plenty of range to get Ethan to work, to get him home, to get him over to his friend's place. The few times he's been able to go over there. And uh, yeah. <laughs> Just going from the driver's side, walking around the car and getting in on the passenger side, you freeze your butt off. Now, how has this car ran for us in the winter? You know what, it's ran like a champ. It has never stopped. Um, I don't think we've ever run this car out of range. We have run our other electric car out of range, but not the Nissan Leaf. We've run into turtle mode. Ethan's kind of gotten into the, uh, the ninja level of driving this thing and making sure he's got enough range to get home. He's really pushed it. We've charged it at public chargers and we've charged it at home. So Ethan, what's it like being a Leaf owner for you? Because we transferred the Leaf over to Ethan when he turned, what, 18? Yeah, 18. When he so. got his driver's license. And he's been the primary driver of this car. What are your thoughts on driving this thing? It's pretty good. It's pretty no, good? No issues. It's a good car. Favorite to pay for gas. And that's pretty sweet. Favorite time of year to drive this thing? 
I actually do like the winter to drive it. Really? Yeah, I don't mind. Well, I just like driving in the winter in general. So. I, I like the summer because your range is better in the summer. That so is nice. It's less of a concern as far as range is concerned. Yeah. But I, I guess for actual driving reasons, the summer is better. Has it, has it been a pain for you in the winter as far as managing how far you can go and all that? No, the only pain is like a pain that would come with every car, which is like when the windows fog up and stuff and it's clearing it off yeah but then the other issue is that i can't always use heat because i want to conserve energy so now do you go without heat completely or do you do you run with heat just well less heat? this winter i've ran with heat all the time just like full heat so yeah see it's when been fine. when tammy and i first bought this car when we were new when we were new to electric vehicles in general we were doing silly things like turning off the heater and and you know being uncomfortable well when i went to violin last year yeah i had to turn off the heat to get yeah because of the distance but uh you know then when we got into year i'd say probably around the second year second and a half year of owning this car we just refused to go without heat we we learned how to manage our distance we would have the car preheated home we would leave with a warm car which we did not do today because we're going on a short trip but uh it heats, up quick, it heats up really quick it still does doesn't it yeah and the uh i think it's an inductive yeah inductive heater some of the Leafs have been failing with their heaters. This one, it's been running like a champ. We haven't had any issues. And like I said earlier, once we get back home, I'll switch over to the spreadsheet mode and kind of show you the uh, the maintenance. Over nine years for a car, for for you to have spent 3,400 bucks, that is amazing. That includes tires. It includes tires, and I had to get a new windshield when Ethan got his drivers, because he was taking the test. And here, when you're taking the test, the car has to be in tip-top shape, and that means no cracks in the windshield. So we got brakes done, we got new tires, we got the new windshield, and uh, that's it. That's all we've spent on this car. We've done a couple of annual maintenances. Maintenances. We haven't done one for a while. We probably should. But uh, yeah, it's it just do that it runs in the front wheel. and it runs and it runs. Oh well, yeah, that there was a rock in your brake. It's gone now. And I still call this our little truck. You've been hauling your bike around with this thing when you went for bike rides in I the did summer, it a right? Times, yeah. Yeah. It's got a ton of space. It's a good car. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you know, for what it is, an in-city car that gets you through a commute, gets you to university or back, gets you through your errands, this car still meets the need, even with its reduced range. You know, in the winter, I think uh, when we hopped in the car, what did it say, 65 kilometers of range? Yeah, something like that. Do you think we could get that? Uh, well, I think so. Is it like closer to maybe 50? Yeah, it's probably closer to 45, 45? 47, 50. So it's kind of tight, but you can charge in the middle of the day. So you could go somewhere, like Ethan could take it to work and plug in, which you never do. I don't know why you don't. I do. Do you plug it in and charge yeah. it? Yeah. The only time I don't plug it in is if I know I'm going somewhere right after I get home. Right. And then I'm like, well, there's no point in plugging in because I'm not going to get any charge. Yeah from the wall plug yeah that's the other thing with this car because in our family we're running three evs we only have two chargers in the garage um ethan and the leaf have been relegated to super slow charging at home so he just charges off a regular old household outlet 120 volt the plugs outside in wall plug. the outside wall plug that's your friend yeah. he plugs in there charges up and he's been good to go and you've been doing that now for what pretty two? much the whole time the whole time you've had the car, which yep. is, I think, what, two years, just uh, about? I'm at like a year and a half. year and a half? Yeah. So, uh, we've been doing it and we've been doing it for life. much longer than that. Um, and yeah, it meets three years, four or five. All of our needs. Other than that, the electric motor's been awesome. Everything in this car is original. The only thing we've replaced is the tires, the front brakes. There was a screw in the windshield wipers. There was a screw missing in the windshield wipers that they caught on one of the maintenances, the windshield, of course and we haven't had to do anything else. It just runs. It's like it's like a, a car that, it's like a golf cart that thinks it's a car. And it's held up really well in the winter. It's held up really well in the summer. I yeah, like it. It's running good. And I've thought so much of it, we're actually thinking this might make sense to get uh, another leaf for Amelia and then down the road for Samantha. 
so we'll see what's out there. The new Leafs that are out are looking really good. So there's a 30 kilowatt pack, a 42, and I think a 60. The 60 kilowatt pack, I mean, that gives three times the range of this thing. That would be more than enough for in-city driving. I don't think we would ever take a Leaf long distance. People have. You can do it. We've got the Chatamo charger in this thing that would be let us. Interesting. It would be kind of interesting, but you would need to give yourself a bit of time. Well, days. A lot of time. <laughs> but it would be an awesome trip. We call that the tree charger because uh, Ethan rests the charger on the tree there and then he plugs the car in tree charging which it is a leaf so it makes sense we're tree charging all right let's uh, dive into the numbers and see how it's done and how much it costs to actually drive this thing over a, a distance of let's say a kilometer because I've got all that figured out now let's take a look at the numbers you can see from the beginning I've actually been tracking all the way back to when we got the leaf back in 2012 I track, back then I used to track how many trips we took and the electricity used, all of that stuff. I would compare it to the other vehicles. I got kind of simplified around 2015. I would just track our distance that we did in the month, how much kilowatts were used, and then what that energy uh, cost us to, to run that distance and then what that was per kilometer. So from the beginning, it's pretty much always been under two cents or under, uh, and then you know moving up to 2018, we're always one cent and under 2019, 2020. And then I've also been keeping track up here in the analytics of the maintenance costs over the years and any extra costs. You can see in this one, uh, let's see what we, we spent that on, yeah, 536 for a windshield. We did a new battery, oh yeah and a new set of tires and then we had a bunch of brakes brake work done that was in 2018 haven't done anything in 2019 haven't done anything in 2020 and so far in 2021 we've only driven a little bit or ethan's only driven a little bit and our total is right here 103,327, and we're still costing to drive it just under or a penny or under it actually I believe rounds up to a penny so not bad so yeah there you go I mean it's a pretty simple picture owning a Nissan Leaf which was the first mass-produced electric car for us has worked out really well we've still got it nine years in I think we're gonna keep it another four or five years we're gonna just keep driving it until it won't go any further it works really well in the summer the range literally doubles to something over a hundred kilometers Plus you can charge in the middle, same thing in the winter, and it's still working for us. So it's a great little car that just won't quit. Um, propelling that car for under, just under one penny, one Canadian penny per, per kilometer, it's incredibly cost effective. It's cheaper than riding a motorbike. It's cheaper than driving, you know, a fuel efficient gas car. Um, it's in, it's, it's just a great, great deal to drive that that number you saw the 56 cents per kilometer that's factoring in the purchase price and all of the maintenance cost so when you factor in that we paid and it was on lease so we actually had to buy out the lease uh, it cost us a little more than if we would have bought it ourselves outright but back then I wasn't sure if it would work for us it turned out that it did even with that it's coming in at about 56 cents a kilometer and that number just keeps dropping and dropping the more kilometers that Ethan puts on it now. So uh, our total right now is over 100,000 kilometers. 103,327 is what we sat in at this morning. And uh, yeah, it just keeps going. So super, super happy with the LEAF. All right, I just wanted to give you a quick update. Huge success story for our LEAF. Uh, we call him Tron, by the way. We named that car when we first got it. So it's called Tron. If you have any questions about how Tron's been doing or any questions on the numbers that we track, we still track every kilowatt hour that we put into the car and every kilowatt hour that we use in the car. Um, let me know, put them in the comments below. If you've got a LEAF experience you wanna share with us, let me know about that as well because uh, I always like to keep up on how well they're doing out there. All right, Micro. Okay.